What's up WordPress nerds? In today's video, we're gonna be going over five things that I think would be important to master or to at least start working on right away. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. And on top of that, if you are interested in a caching plugin for WordPress, check out the link in the description. I really uh, recommend WP Rocket. It is my favorite caching plugin for WordPress. If you end up clicking the link and buying a license, I get a small kickback, but you pay the same price. Um, all right, to get started here, the first thing that um, I wanted to mention is the reason why I'm making this video is that I've gotten a lot of questions about things to be working on or just general questions just on Twitter, on in emails, particularly in emails, and just in the comment sections of previous videos. So these are some things that I've been working on recently, things that I think would be important to master, whether you're freelancing, working at a corporation, or just kind of looking to make your WordPress developing life easier. So the first thing is, of course, base skills. Um, this is kind of a gimme answer, and so I apologize for this one, but it's really true. Like, there's things in HTML that I need to keep learning every single day, particularly with SEO and accessibility, um, things like just making sure that my stuff can be read on a on a uh, screen reader, making sure that the um, that the content is is able to be traversed in a way that makes a sense to a screen reader things like SEO and making sure a JSON LD is on there, making sure that our meta tags are set up correctly and that the I'm using the appropriate tags, not going too deep down uh, the tree, stuff like that. CSS, um, I, it's a, just a very core skill, making sure that you're up to date on like CSS grid and then being able to use variables, flex box, all that good stuff. If you're running around still using tables and floats, I got bad news for you. <laughs> we don't use those anymore. You got to use some of this new stuff. And that is something that you would know by uh, if you are keeping up on these base skills. And this isn't just learning just baseline CSS, but also keeping up to date on it. JavaScript is another huge one. It's It feels infinite at this point because of all the libraries that are built on top of it. Um, I'd highly recommend going over to westboss.com slash JavaScript and then you will find yourself in a brand new area. He just like tweeted this out today, so I thought I'd add it to the video. But this is huge. This just gives like essentially a better version of W3 schools and stuff like that. And like the Mozilla site, I can't remember, it was like MDN, I think it Mozilla Developer Network. But it has all these different um, uh, articles that you can just pump through and just like learn all about var and let and strict mode, snake case, camel case, linters, uh, back ticks, all this kind of stuff that's essentially in his like JavaScript for everyone videos. But man, this is a really good one that, that you can start uh, jumping into right now and like basically pick a page and you'll be doing, you'll be learning something very valuable. Um, SCSS I also added in here because there's a part there's just stuff that CSS can't do yet but I think would still be really valuable. Most um, are using like stylus or less or, or SCSS. Pretty much every place that I've gone to or, or have uh, worked with has using has used SAS, so I use it. But like making sure you know how functions work, making sure you know how mixins work and maps, and making sure that you have know how basic that kind of those basics work inside of SAS is really helpful. The WordPress API, it's most like why most of you end up watching my channel is because I talk exclusively about WordPress pretty much. And so making sure that as a WordPress developer or freelancer or anywhere in between, the API is gonna be infinitely valuable to you. Um, you can't just use WordPress and get by with just PHP knowledge. That's gonna be the kind of stuff. And um, PHP should be on this list. I don't know. <laughs> why it's not on here. Um, it, it should be number seven. PHP, just core skills inside of there. Um, I really like uh, uh, Jeffrey Way over at uh, Laracasts because they have lots of videos on just like core basic PHP knowledge. Um, and it's all Laravel, also. A lot of it you can kind of, you know, glean information out of. And then obviously React, we've got Gutenberg and Headless WordPress. Those kind of things are extremely useful. I'll move on, but those would be things that I would say if you're unfamiliar with any of these in certain spots 
or feel like you're lacking, there's lots of different resources. Comment down below if you need some extra resources, I'd be happy to send you a sub. Uh, design patterns and principles. Um, once you know a language, particularly in this case, like PHP and JavaScript, you're gonna need to start knowing what are some common patterns and uh, um, principles when it comes to uh, kind of getting the best uh, or the most out of your, your um, kind of project, if that makes sense. Like the design patterns that you use will make your life easier down the road. So rather than creating um, you know, so if coming up with something on your own, you now you should have some patterns that you can fall back on. So you can just use one of these because it will fit your situation. Um, there's a website down here uh, called refactoring.guru and they have um, all sorts of design principles here. Let me uh, catalog right here. So they have all these different uh, patterns that you can just kind of jump into like you know, singleton and factory are super popular, abstract factory, uh, iterator, command. Uh, those are ones that you'll probably need to know at some point. And they're really valuable to know because you'll jump into a situation like, oh man, how do I handle this? Oh, I know there's a design pattern for that. Kind of the cool thing about this is like, if you click into it, it goes into deeply about what it is, how to implement it, pros and cons, um, how it relates to other patterns and then there's like these examples down here below so you just click on php um, it comes up with a conceptual example or a real world example swaps the text out for both to be more relevant to like its example and you can just kind of browse this and see like exactly how um it it uh is handled and all the comments and the um results of what would it would look like if it uh, was executed so it's a very valuable resource and I would highly recommend jumping through and kind of, they have, they, they rate them by stars. So just go to the ones that, um, uh, you can, uh, that you can see have a uh, higher amount of stars. And those are usually ones that are a bit more popular. So those would be ones that I would say invest, invest your time into first. Um, and then there's these principles up here, the dry principle, don't repeat yourself. So making sure that the code that you're writing is something that you only have to do once that, if you're feeling like you're copying and pasting a lot of your code, like between components or something like that, making sure that maybe you have a centralized place where you can kind of tap into these uh, pieces that you're copying and pasting rather than copying and pasting it. Uh, KISS uh, stands for keep it simple, stupid, which I mean, ultimately just means that, hey, if you don't over engineer anything, don't like, like we're gonna be talking about scaling, but don't like be thinking too far ahead down the road if, you can kind of foresee that it it's a low chance of needing it. So just making sure that your code is something that is easily accessible to other developers, accessible to your future self, and you're not adding a bunch of weight on top of your, um, uh, of your code that you may not need. And then scaling, just setting yourself up for success in the future. This isn't even talking about, you know, like servers and stuff like that. I'm just saying like, in WordPress, making sure that your code is filterable, that you have actions in certain places so you can hook into data or just and just use it in other places, that type of stuff. Um, so those are the things that I would say you probably should master if you haven't already. Third is automation. Um, you wanna stop worrying about how your co code is deployed or how your assets are being compiled. Like, that should just be taken care of. That's something that you can do ahead of time and, and, and not worrying about it every single time you open up a new project. And so that's one of those things that in many cases you can spread across all of your projects. Uh, rarely in my, in my, in my opinion, can you not like take some of it from project to project to project. So those are things that you can uh, do ahead of time. And I like, and, not only, um, you know, asset compiling and all that, but like deploying, like I like to use circle CI or buddy.works. Um, those are great services that have really generous free plans that you can jump in. You can, you, it'll give you, um, like, a, essentially an API to work with, to create these, uh, services that, you know, do stuff for you, like pulls in your date, uh, pulls in stuff based on Git pushes and you can, you know, pull in your code, build it, 
uh, run Composer, run NPMI, or you know, like a Webpack thing, compiles all your assets, and then like SFTPs them off to a server or something like that, or spins up a new one. Who knows? So these are the things that uh, you can just set up ahead of time and just reuse over and over again, something to take off your plate. And you're not sitting there just trying to remember passwords to stuff or trying to remember this, that, and the other just to kind of get your stuff deployed. I mean, and then also like DB migrations. Um, I like to use um, WP Migrate DB Pro. Uh, that is a really good plugin. I have a link in the description for that. It's an affiliate link. Um, but I really enjoy it because you can just pull in the database and even the files from a live server down locally or from live to staging or from staging to live. And you can send those things around way easier. They even have a CLI, which I really like. You can even toss that around and uh, take advantage of it. So you don't have to like use the actual interface and click stuff around. You can just run a couple commands and it just does it for you. Uh, next is a little bit less related to WordPress itself, but just kind of more like a like a like a career thing, like freelancing. You gotta have some soft skills. You have to work with clients. You have to work with designers. You have to work with other contractors. You have to work with multiple people inside of the client space, um, other IT folks. Or if you're in kind of like a corporation. You need to be able to interface with your project manager and the designers and other coworkers, things like that. Those are going to be things that you should master at reg like regardless of what you're doing, because you're going to be working with other people. The only time you're really not is if you're just creating a product, putting it up online. Um, and even then you're kind of like interacting with your customers. And so you're, you're interacting with people on one way or another. So I really like the soft skills engineering podcast. Um, you can find it, uh, here at softskills.audio. Uh, they really talk about, um, all sorts of things and they talk about, you know, pay raises, hiring and firing, technical leadership, new technologies, you know, getting promoted, code reviews, quitting your job, even like, these are all things that you're going to probably use on some level in some capacity. Um, even if you're freelancing, just knowing kind of like how to um, interact with the client and things like that. It, these are some of the things that they kind of go over in soft skill engineering. I highly recommend this podcast. If uh, you can just throw it on the top of your pile of podcasts, if you want. Um, there's also a book called The Manager's Path. I've recently started reading this one. I really like it. Um, it's currently on sale. It's $18. So uh, I would jump on that one if you're watching this video right now. Um, but uh, uh, it goes over kind of like the identities of the different parts of um, of kind of the tech space. Um, and the parts that I'm reading right now, it's kind of going over uh, what a tech lead is, what a manager is, and kind of the expectations that can be formed around that. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's only useful for managers and tech leads or people who are aspiring to become managers or leaders or whatever. It is also a tool to give you an idea of what you can expect from your leaders. So when you have one-on-ones with managers, you can talk about some of the things that you could uh, expect from them. And maybe if you didn't know about one-on-ones, now you can go to your manager and say, hey, one-on-ones should be a thing we should meet once a week or regularly. So there's some things that you can, if you are looking to be a tech lead or a manager, there's some advice in there too. But ultimately, I think it's a really cool uh, book that um, helps out with soft skills as well. And I think that it would be useful to anybody who's looking to improve their engineering life. Speaking of engineering life, um, the last one is balance. And I, and I threw this one in here because it feels very appropriate for the time that we're living in right now, just with everything going on in the world. Like there's a lot of us that are working from home who weren't before and being able to achieve a work-life balance is something that it's, it's hard to kind of encapsulate that in a single bullet point. And I think that there's a lot of work to be done there is particularly in my space, but 
I would say being able to take PTO comfortably and being able to step away from the computer comfortably and take breaks and all this kind of stuff is a hard balance to achieve, particularly for a lot of us who are really driven and like want to like, or you've maybe even like imposter syndrome where you're feeling like I have to be working in order to get better so I can be as good as people think I am. <laughs> um, just like working for the wrong reasons and stuff like that. It's good to be able to kind of flatten that out, even the scales and make sure that you're spending a good amount of time working, good amount of time learning, and a good amount of time relaxing. Um, and that's different for everybody. So it's hard to give advice without doing a whole podcast on just me, but um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, and then there's also that phrase, you know, never stop learning, which is a great little phrase, but uh, except time, sometimes you do need to stop learning for a minute. Uh, and I don't mean that in the grand scheme of things, the 10,000 foot view. I mean that on a day to day, just because you step away from your computer because you're done with your freelance clients or with your nine to five job doesn't mean that you need to go over to your couch or bed and then pick up the manager's path and just start reading that. Um, usually what people, that's usually kind of how people take that, that quote. Um, but no, you should be definitely working on hobbies like learn gardening or woodworking or spend time with your family and your pets and stuff like that. So it kind of goes along with balance, but there's this kind of like internal pressure that we give ourselves, particularly in the engineering community about um, always onto the next framework, onto the next library, onto the next um, language, onto the next whatever. And it feels like you're just kind of like always learning, but never using. Like, I think that there's, there's a balance to be had there. And so that's why I kept number five is balance. I wanted to end on that. So hopefully you guys learned something. Um, hopefully this was useful to you in some way. Uh, I think that there's lots of things that I could add to this list, but I wanted to keep it short. So if you've learned something, let me know in the comments, leave a like if you did, just like if you didn't. Um, I also have a Patreon video coming out soon. If you're interested in more advanced WordPress tutorials, give that a check in the link below. So. Appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.